So Colonel Quartich from Avatar, Death, and Black Caesar walk into a bar. Oh yeah, this shit's gonna get bloody. VFW is the low-budget, 80s throwback, over-the-top action kick-ass-a-thon. We follow Stephen Lang's Fred, who along with his veteran buddies go and drink at the local VFW and tell old war stories. Shortly before closing, a girl bursts in with a bag, pursued by three big, geeked-out gang members. Noticing these guys that just burst into their bar aren't up to any good, they defend themselves and the girl. And of course, being the badass vets that they are, they slaughter all the intruders. Problem is, the girl who ran in, that bag she had is full of a bunch of dope that she stole from the gang. And now the rest of the gang is pissed that not only have they lost their drugs, but these old dudes in this bar just killed some of their guys. So they wage war on the VFW and our heroes have to defend themselves over the course of the night. This movie has a great early 80s John Carpenter kind of throwback vibe going for it. It's very reminiscent of those Carpenter classics like Assault on Precinct 13 and Escape from New York. They envision a future where crime is just out of control and gang Gangs run the streets. They're all hopped up almost like mutants. If I didn't know any better, I would say that this movie could have possibly been made back in that era. It is so genuine in its portrayal. So if you're a fan of that style and era and vision that so many movies from that early to mid 80s period had, then you'll love this. But what you'll also love is this awesome cast. You've got Stephen Lang. They'll eat your eyes for juju beads. Fred Williamson. Cool, sex machine! Martin Cove. No mercy, strike first. David Patrick Kelly. Whoa. Warriors! George Wadet. Norm! William Sadler. You might be a king or a little street sweeper, but sooner or later you dance with the Reaper. And more. This is a treasure trove of actors that have roots in those 70s and 80s over-the-top action flicks that we all love. It's pretty staggering how many recognizable faces there are here for such a low-budget movie. And they all do great. Well, there's plenty of the parts where they are playing a character inside of one of these over-the-top 80s action movies. There are plenty of other parts, especially especially in the first third of the movie where there's some genuine solid acting going on here. Not to say when they are acting in that over the top 80s action way that they're bad, but at those times they are acting in that over the top machismo way that we expect out of that type of flick. Either way, it all works beautifully here and everybody is on point with their performance in this movie. Our story here is fairly simple. What I set up a minute ago, that's pretty much it. There's a couple other little intricities here or there, but more or less, that's what it is. It's pretty basic. Our heroes are held up in the bar, the bad guys are trying to get into the bar and kill them all, and our heroes have to defend themselves. Simple. However, it is told very effectively here. About the first quarter to a third of this movie is build up. There's not really a whole lot action wise that happens in this first part of the movie. You could actually go as far as to call it a slow burn. But when the movie does kick off, it goes and it does not stop until the end credits roll. Like this movie is relentless at that point. There is not a lot of time to breathe. Once it kicks off, you are going. And it's a really good fucking time. Now while I did say that first part of the movie is a bit of a slow burn, that's not really a bad thing. We actually get just the right amount of character development and time to get to know our characters from both sides during this time. So that when things actually do kick off, there is a bit more meaning to it all. Yeah, this is an 80s throwback over the top action movie, but even those movies need something for you to latch onto so that all the actions going on on screen actually have a bit of meaning to you. It ain't gonna be super deep, but there has to be some type of connection to keep you engaged in what's going on. And VFW definitely does that. It has just that right amount of character building to get you invested in the characters. And it doesn't hurt that the actors that are giving these performances during these character building moments are so good themselves. Due to the good performances and the well-written dialogue in the first part of this movie, we get to know our characters not through exposition dumps, but through natural dialogue as they just sit there and bullshit with each other. You don't just get to know things about these characters, you get to actually know these characters and who they are and how they react to things. And that's something you just can't get with exposition dumps and why this approach is so much more effective. So we get to know our characters and we're finally to the part we've all been waiting for. The action to kick off and the bloody violence to begin. And oh is it bloody. Even though this movie did have a pretty low budget, you could 
tell they really went out of their way to make this as ridiculously over the top and violent as possible. And when I say as possible, I mean as possible while still maintaining the same level of quality throughout. So while there are some parts that they probably did have to scale back a bit, they never took it too far and overextended themselves to where it just didn't work. I was really happy to see that. They knew what they could do. They knew what they were capable of and that's what they did. And even though they had a low budget and they probably did have to scale some stuff back, this one is still gloriously violent and bloody. You got some over the top kills here. I mean like people being curb stomped and heads being stomped on, decapitated, stabbings, impalings, beaten to death with things, cut up, blown up, shot up, pretty much any way you can imagine and a bit more motherfuckers get taken out in this movie. If old school over the top violence and gore is your thing, then you should revel in this one's gory ass brilliance. Accompanying all this 80s throwback awesomeness is the absolutely fantastic synth score that totally fits the bill. It is the cherry on top that helps sell the whole thing and sounds like it is straight up out of an old school 80s over the top action flick. VFW is one of those movies that I wanted a lot out of, but I really wasn't expecting much out of. Thankfully though, with its simple yet very effectively told story, genuinely well written dialogue, performances that ooze super badass cool, and an overall fantastic aesthetic and great throwback vibe, not only did it live up to, but it exceeded what I was wanting from it. VFW is a great ride from beginning to end and is absolutely worth a ring. All he wanted was, hey, this. I have to return some videotape. <laughs> If you have any type of affinity for old school 80s over the top action, you will have a fantastic time with this movie. And even if you don't, this one would still be a great time for the night. So there it is guys, my review of VFW. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy Kansas City. Anybody else wanna come in my bar? Well I know these are all actors playing parts. I gotta say, Stephen Lang seems like he is probably this bad motherfucker in real life too. I mean, look, everything he plays, he's just pretty much a badass motherfucker. And I, I gotta think that there might be a little bit of truth to that in real life. Like really, I haven't looked the guy up, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's like legitimately a veteran or some like cop or a, I don't know, a fucking superhero in real life or something. He's got me sold. This is not a guy I would wanna meet in a dark alley. I mean, everything he's in, this guy's just a fucking badass. I, I have no doubt that if I ever met this guy, he could just break me in fucking half. Eat your eyes for juju beads.